that these made war with Bera, king of Saddam, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, and Shemember, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, which is Zor, all these were joined together in the Vale of Sidim, which is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Chedor Leomor, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. And in the fourteenth year came Chedor Lamur and the kings that were with him, and smote the Rephames in Ashtaroth, Ker Naim in Zuzim in Ham, and Emim in Shava, Kirathem, and the Horites in their mountain, Sir, unto El Paran, which is by the wilderness. And they returned and came to En Mishapt, which is Kadesh, and Smot, all the country of the Almekites, and also the Amorites that dwell in Hazanon Tamar. And there went out the king of Sodom, and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Adma, and the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, the name in Zor. And they joined battle with in the vale of Sidim, with Chedlormer, the king of Elam, and with Tidal, king of Nation, and Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arakok king of Elisar, four kings with five, and the vale of Sidim was full of slime pits, and the king of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there, and they that remained fled to the mountain, and they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way, and they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram that Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshal, and brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servant, born in his own house, 318 and pursued them unto Dan and he divided himself against them and he and his servants by night and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah which is on the left hand of Damascus and he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chedlormar and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Sheva, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And he blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine and the king of Sodom, said unto Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich, save only that which the young men have eaten and the portion of the men which went with me, Anler, Eshal, and Mamre, let them take their portion. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is the Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine hair. 
one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out, you're of child see, to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me in heifer of three years old, and she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years, and also that nation whom they shall serve serve will I judge and afterwards shall they come out with great substance and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace thou shalt be buried in a good old age but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again for iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full and it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark behold a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces and the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, and the Kenizzites, and the Camadites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Aphiams, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Jergesites, and the Jebusites. Now Sarai, Aram's wife, bare him no children, and she had an handmaid in Egypt whose name was Hagar. And the Sarai said unto Abram, Behold, now that the Lord hath restrained me from bearing, I pray thee go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened the voice of Sarai. And the Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to husband Abram to his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes, and Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee, I have given my maid into thy bosom, and when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes, the Lord judge between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand, do to her, as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the same way, sure. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence camest thou, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction.
And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spoke unto her. The God ceased me, for she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Where before the well was called Ber Laoi Roy, behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered, between them. And Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram came with his son named Hagar bar Ishmael. And Abram was fourscore six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. And when Abram was nineteen years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me. And be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked to him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abram, for a father of many nations. Have I made thee? And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish your covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, and I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, and the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God." And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant before thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised and yes shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised amongst you every man child in your generation he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised and by covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant and the uncircumcised man said child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that so shall be cut off from his people he hath broken my covenant and God said unto Abraham as for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall call her name B. And I will bless her and give thee a son also for her. Ye, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abram fell upon his face and laughed and said, In his heart shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear the son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac and Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And he left off talking with him and God went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in the house, and all that were brought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the self same day, as God has said unto him. And Abraham was ninety years old and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, and Ishmael his son was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin in the self same day, was Abraham circumcised in Ishmael his son. And all the men of the house born in the same and bought the money as strangers were circumcised with them. And the God Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door 
in the heat of the day. And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree, and I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant? And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man, and he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf, which he dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto these according to time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and in ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I... Of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring up Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is, Come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went forward, Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord, and Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou only destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure they be fifty righteous within the city, wilt shall also destroy and not spare this place for the fifty righteous that are therein. That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and the righteous should be as the wicked, and that be far from thee shall not judge of the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the places for their sake. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes, and peradventure there shall lack five of the fifty righteous, wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again, and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak peradventure, there shall thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it, if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, peradventure, there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet this once again. Peradventure then shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. 
And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot said in the gate of Sodom, Lot seeing them rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with the face towards the ground too, and said, Behold now, my Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early, and go on your way. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he rushed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house. And he had made them a feast, and he did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night bring them out unto us that we may know them and lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said i pray you brethren do not so wickedly behold now i have two daughters which have not known man let me i pray you bring them out unto you and do ye to them as in good in your eyes only unto these men do nothing for Therefore came they under the shadow of my roof, and they said, Stand back. And they said again, This is one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will need to be judged now. Will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon men, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said, Unto Lord, hast thou here any besides, son-in-law and thy son and their daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons and lord and the law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his son in law. And when the morning arose, then the angels hast Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the inequity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth, and set him without the city. And it came unto pass that they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind for thee neither. Stay thou in all plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O oh, not so, my Lord, behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shewed unto me in saving my life and i cannot escape the mountain lest some evil take me and i die behold now the city is near to flee unto and it is the little one. Oh, let me escape thither is it not a little one and my soul shall live and he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow the city for which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zor. The sun was risen upon the earth when the law entered into Zor. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimming stone, fire from the Lord of heaven, and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up early in the morning to place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and towards all the land of the plain. And behold, and though smoke of the country went up as the smoke of the furnace, and it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrown, when he threw the cities in which Lot dwelt, and Lot went up 
up out of Zor, he dwelt in the mountains and his two daughters with him, for he feared to dwell in Zor, and he dwelt in the cave, and he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine.